Well guys, I've finally done it. I've made the plunge and I purchased an EG4 unit. Not because of all the hype, not because of all the marketing, but because it is actually a really good unit. So this unit came out probably about six months to a year ago now. And this thing, I have not seen any complaints on it. Looked through all the forms, I've looked through all the websites, I haven't seen any bad reviews on this unit. So the reason why I've gone with this unit, now I have been playing with the Growatt, I have the Kelfa here as well, and the biggest problem with the inverter industry, especially when it first started to come to North America more widely, is that a lot of the units that they were building were more or less made for the European market or outside of North America. You know, and some people, they would play around with this. Uh, they would buy two of these units and then put them in parallel to get each leg to get your 240 split phase. Uh, some people would even buy the 230 volt AC and then build in a transformer to get their 120. So really inefficient way of doing it in my view. So now we finally have a unit that has 240 split phase and 120, and it was actually designed and built for the North American market. No more having to do workarounds. No more having to do neutral ground bonding, trying to figure out if we should bond two units at the same time, or if it just has to have one. No more headaches. It, this unit here, literally, you just run the wiring to it, turn it on and go. No more split phase, no more transformers. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. I went out and purchased this unit. So it is 6,000 watts AC, which means that you can do 3,000 watts on leg one and 3,000 watts on leg two. You can't do 1,000 on one and then 4,000 on the other. It's just 3,000, 3,000, which is more than enough power. We have two MPPT solar charge controllers built into the unit. So you can have two different arrays out there. Just in my opinion, a way more versatile unit, which is why I've decided to actually go with this as my full-time running unit. So we are going to strip everything off of this wall in the future, and I'm just going to hook up this one unit, which is going to be amazing. I believe the standby consumption on this is somewhere around 60 watts. Uh, the standby consumption on that single 3000 watt, single phase unit, 120 volt, I believe is somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 watts. So for an extra 10 watts of standby power, I'm gonna have 240 volts, so two phases. This here comes with all the breaker switches you need for your load out, your grid, uh, your generator. If you wanna hook up a standby generator to this unit, we also have a battery uh, circuit breaker here built in. Uh, we even have a PV disconnect here built right into the unit and it also has a lockout. I've even seen other videos where people have run an external disconnect where they put it on the outside of their house, which legally speaking, that is where it should be. But it's nice to have it a disconnect on the inside and then the ability to actually mount a disconnect on the outside so that you can disconnect your array in case of an emergency, fire, or whatnot. Then it keeps you legally compliant. Uh, this is also UL listed, so I mean, it is just an amazing overall unit. It comes with Wi-Fi, so you can remotely monitor it. Now this unit here, I was a little bit disappointed to find that it is not real-time monitoring. Uh, it refreshes like every 10 or 30 seconds and just gives you a snapshot of what it is at that current time. I would have liked to have seen uh, more realistic monitoring, uh, but there is other units out there like Solar Assistant that you can hook up to this that'll give you more of a detailed viewpoint as far as if you have like a Victron shunt hooked up to the system, then you can see more accurate real-time monitoring. Uh, but yeah, amazing unit. I can't wait to get it up on the wall and start playing with it and hook it up to my overall system. Uh, speaking of the Victron smart shunt, there are some people out there that have figured out a way with a breadboard to actually hook the Victron smart shunt directly up to the EG4. Now, some people like myself are just gonna use Solar Assistant to start as an intermediate, but it would be nice if somebody could maybe create a smaller PCB version of that connection from a Victron Smart Shunt to the battery communication on this unit. That would be ideal. I would love to have that. If anybody out there wants to create something like that and would like to send it to me to test it, I'll be more than happy to. 
So going from communication battery to a Victron Smart Shunt, having that communication would be beautiful. So if anybody out there, the challenge is out there to you. I'm not sure what else to say about this. Um, I'm gonna be hooking it up. I'm gonna start stripping everything off this wall and mount this up. Uh, what I was thinking of doing is having a wire way, uh, probably one the size of this cabinet, and then mount this directly on top. So it'll be about six inches taller than what it is now, which should put this screen just about eye level for me, which is perfect. And then I'm limited into space. Like you can see up here, this is my rail for my door, uh, the garage door that opens. So I don't want to put it too high and come in contact with this. This one I was able to get behind, but this one here, I want it a little bit lower. So yeah, exciting, exciting. I can't wait to start playing with this and get it all hooked up. So look forward to those videos coming up in the future. And uh, if you want to follow along, subscribe, like, and thank you as always for watching. Bye.